How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Views and in today's video we're going to do another quick mesh mixer fix. But in this case we're doing something that is very engineering and geometric as opposed to the usual organic models I usually fix like ones from games or pulled from you know animation programs and that kind of thing. Today we're actually going to fix something engineering and this is actually suggested to me from Derek who has seen my other mesh mixer videos and he was kind enough to send through this file so I could show you guys uh, basically how I would go about fixing this model. So as you can see here in the in the window it's built up of I-beams and it's being pulled out of um, another CAD program I'm not too sure what was used but you can see that there's some errors and if I go to separate shells there's an awful lot of shells all here 28 shells in total each of them being one of those beams so they wouldn't print very well and if we combine them together again you can see there's lots of shells and if you look at scale so units and dimensions for scale it's currently 174 millimeters long which is roughly about that long so for printing it although you might think you might get away with it if we look at the uh, go to measure and look at the actual thickness of these areas for example this beam here it's showing as 0.2 millimeters, so very much too small. If I can, yeah, so far too small. 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. There is no way you'd be able to 3D print those details. So in today's video, I'll show you how I would go about thickening this up and fixing it for printing. So there's a few different approaches that I've mentioned before in my other mesh mixer videos. You can either spend the tedious proper way of doing it where you get the best possible detail or you do the fast and slightly rougher process. So we're going to do the faster process here, but I may do a slower, more tedious video on the, the more accurate process. If you guys are interested, definitely let me know in the comments. So what we're going to do first is you'll notice here with the, if I press W, the, the triangle show. So this, these are the triangles in the model. There's not very many. It's a very low triangle count model, which makes sense because there's not really any curves. It's just flat edges. So it's a very efficient file. It's only a few kilobytes actually. But to do the make solid tool and the functions we need, we kind of need to give mesh mix a little bit more detail to work with. I find it tends to make the make solid tool work better and more efficiently. So to do this, we'll go to select and do control A to select everything and then remesh. And we're going to give it some more triangles, linear subdivision, and we'll just ramp it up to 50% like that. So it just gives it more triangles to work with. Um, I'm not sure if this strictly is necessary, but it tends to help in my case. So there we go. Looks pretty good to me. Clear selection. And now we're going to go to edit and the magical make solid. So with the make solid tool, you'll notice the fast is pretty much useless most of the case. Most of the time, it's not really, it's destroyed the model. And it's not done what we want, so we'll go into accurate. And this is where you'll you'll test something, go back, test something, go back. So we noted that the, the thinnest areas are about 0.1 millimeters or 0 0.2, 0 0.3 maybe. So we're going to actually have to offset our mesh a little bit. So if we go into the offset distance, this is where we can start making this model printable. So... I'm going to enter 0.5 I'm going to ramp my solid accuracy and mesh density all the way up. <laughs> so you need a pretty grunty computer to do this and a minimum thickness of one. And then you hit update and depending on how powerful your computer is, you may want to go grab a drink because you might be waiting a little bit of time. So let's skip forward some time. And we're back. So here we have our made solid uh, result and it's black because those are all the triangles. So if you press W, it'll reveal our shape. And this is the result. So I think it's done a pretty good job. What I will do is I'll accept that, accept, and then compare it against the original to see how it's gone. So move it up there, escape, and then see what the original looks like and see if we've lost anything. So actually looks like it's preserved all the detail which is quite nice yep that's all there that's all there so you may find in some cases you lose a few of those areas like where it was very thin or perhaps where these red uh, red areas are you might lose pieces there but in this case it seems to have gotten everything so yes you'll notice that everything is far chunkier now 
And that's simply because we've thickened it up to a realistic expectation. This is something I used to fight every day when I was doing this for my full-time job. When I was thinking up uh, engineering files for printing, usually an SLS. Even SLS, which is selective laser sintering, needs a minimum wall thickness of 0.8. Like, the thinnest you can go is probably 0.8, maybe 0.6, depending on the orientation. But usually it's too fragile, I'd recommend something minimum of point of uh, one millimeter. And if you're printing this with FDM, definitely at least one millimeter, 1.2 ideally. So we get our analysis tool again and go into da -da -da measure. We can now measure our thicknesses, 1 1.3, 1.1, 1.3, 1.1, 1.4, 1.1. So this is the thinnest, even though it looks chunky, this is the thinnest you could go at its current scale. You could scale it up bigger and go thinner, but if this is going to stay at its current scale, that's that's probably the, the thinnest I'd go. You might even want to offset it even more, like 0.6. So before we send this to the printer, it's currently way, there's way too many triangles, so we can simplify this quite easily. Uh, so first we're going to go to generate face groups and we're going to just separate the main face groups from the shape with angle threshold being not too ridiculous. Looks pretty good to me. Yep, let's go with that, accept. And I don't want to damage the uh, the overall look of this shape, so I'm going to go to select and just select some key face groups. Like that, that. And then we'll go to reduce. So we're going to use the reduce tool to cut down those triangles, basically combine them. And then when you combine triangles, you cut down your file size. So let's go to, yeah, percentage, percentage works. Let's go with something like 80, like just really cut it down. And we'll preserve group boundaries as well. Preserve group boundaries. Looks good to me. I mean, we could even go higher than that. We can even go to 90. Ugh. <laughs> I don't really like that look, but you know what? It does work. Yeah, okay, fine. 85. I don't like it where it's gone from one vertex. Yeah, that's good. Accept. And essentially, you can go around and do that with the other face groups. So you can just manually reduce those triangles down. If you try to do them all at once, I find, one, it takes a very long time because it's trying to process a lot of lot of data at once and I also find it can damage edges you get weird artifacts so this is a good way to do it without losing the, the, all the effort you've put into to get that shape nice and defined uh, this is a good way to reduce those triangles without damaging that final final shape so these are the only ones I was going to do going to do now but you could go around and do the whole thing if you like or you could be brave enough and try to do them all at once if you like <laughs> and see how that goes Cool, all right, well, I'm gonna be happy with that. I could reduce it further, but as I said, for the sake of this exercise, we're not going to. Uh, let's make sure there's no errors. So analysis inspector and auto repair, but there's no, no problem there. And we can just go to file and export it out. And here's our fixed and thickened model in Simplify 3D. You can see I've generated support material and it would print no problems at all. And that's how you can thicken up and repair engineering style STL files. So you might get it out of SolidWorks, you might get it out of Inventor, you might get these weird I-beam assemblies that need to be fixed and printed for small scale studies. Now you know how to do them for free using MeshMixer. So thank you so much guys for watching. Hope you found this tutorial on MeshMixer fixing handy. And if you want to see future 3D printing videos here on Makes Muse, don't forget to subscribe. It helps me out a huge amount almost at 25k and when we reach there we're going to do something really really cool i look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on makers muse catch you later guys bye